Hey guys, Dan Kello here with Straight Shooting with Dan and Joseph. Remember, you can watch all of our stuff at straightshootingwithdanandjoseph.com that I have all the information about our podcast or any of the video, uh, links to any of the podcasts, any of the videos or any of the documents we put out are all on our website. If you've got any other questions for us, email us at host at straightshootingwithdanandjoseph.com. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to go over how I like to set up my bench when I'm shooting a rimfire bench rest competition such as ARA or PSL. I like to use one piece rest. I use the PQP joystick rest. I slide it as far forward as possible on the bench. That way I'm gonna get it as close to the target as I can. It's only a couple extra inches, but I figure I need all the help I can get. I uh, got a concrete top here today, so I'm gonna have super feet that I will have my rest on. I shoot it right-handed, so I will move this as far to the left as I possibly can. So this rear leg is right on the edge of the top of the bench. And this enables me to get closer to this and not have to hunch over. Uh, I'm pretty long waisted, so I get my stool really close to the ground. That way I can keep my back straight and I can sit here like this and look, look at my flags and look down my scope and be comfortable and my back not be hurting after a while. A couple other things I like to do. I like to have this pad here to rest my elbow on. That concrete wears on that elbow uh, when you're shooting all day long, it, it'll begin to wear on you. Uh, I do like this little hand rest, and typically I'm gonna shoot free recoil, so I will just contact the trigger. I may get just a little bit of cheek contact here, but I try to minimize it to where I can just barely feel it when I'm touching on there. And I like the free recoil because I wanna do it exactly the same way every time, and so the easiest way for me to do that is to ju just not make any contact with the gun. Some people like to put a little shoulder in it. Some people like to pinch the trigger, which means they're putting their thumb against the back of the trigger guard and then they're pinching the trigger here and they're resisting the recoil with their thumb. Um, like I say, that's just not how I do it. It doesn't mean you can't be successful with it. It's just not how I prefer to do it. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my rest level and I'm gonna have it as low as possible to get that center of gravity down as low as possible. I'm going to have this level and I'm going to have it use a target level on my target. That way, when I am doing my windage adjustment, left to right, it should track right straight across. And that's going to make it a lot easier and a lot, of quick, lot quicker for me to come across the target. Now, occasionally when I hang the uh, target, I may not get it quite level. So I will make some minor adjustments with my leveling legs here in the front to, so that that my uh, crosshairs does track straight across. Now, that'll throw the, my gun being not quite level, but it's very minor adjustments and it's not gonna be bad enough to where it's gonna hurt accuracy in any way. Just making up for a slight misalignment of the target whenever I hung it on the backer. Uh, I will typically put two full boxes of ammo right here that I'm shooting. I'll put my warmer ammo here that I'm gonna use to foul my barrel. And then I've got even more ammo sitting over here just in case I need it. Got my target level here, my uh, level for my wind flag stands, which you do want to get your wind flags uh, level so that they're a lot more true. Today I'm shooting with four wind flags. So my first one, I'll put five paces away from the bench and then each one is another 10 paces from there. So 10 paces then to the second flag, then 10 more to the third, then 10 more to my fourth flag. I'll, I shoot directly over the top of my flags. They'll be just under the flight path of the bullet. Do make sure you're getting them down low enough. You don't wanna shoot your flags. Although I have done that and just about everybody else at one time or another has done it too. So I will line my flags up so that one is stacked right on top of the other. As I'm sitting here looking at my flags, I can see my farthest flag is the top highest and then the third one out is the next highest, and then the second one out is the next, and then the closest one is the lowest. But it makes it real easy that as I'm sitting here, I can easily look through the scope, look at my flags, and try to do both at the same time, although that's a little more difficult, but I will get everything lined up and watch with my left eye the flags. And as soon as my wing condition gets just right, typically I've got to close my left eye and go ahead and squeeze off the shot. Some people, will get their 
gun aligned exactly where they want to shoot and then they'll sit up and watch the flags and then pull the trigger i i don't do that there's nothing wrong with doing that it's just i just i just need to look through my scope when i shoot i just can't break that habit and really prefer to do that so i'm going to grab the camera right quick and i'm going to show you how i have my wind flags aligned and how i have them stacked and it really makes them a lot easier to see so that you just look down through there and you can see every single one of them. It takes a while to get them lined up perfect, especially if you're by yourself. If you've got a partner with you that can help you, that will really speed it up. Uh, some people, when they shoot by themselves, will actually stretch a string. I have done that before. If I was gonna do that, I would attach that string to this uh, left leveling leg here and then pull it to the, to the backer and put it right next to the backer and tie it off to the target frame and pull it straight. And then that'll help you. If you get it good and tight, then you can bring each flag, the top of each flag, right up to that string. And uh, it really speeds it up if you're by yourself. But to uh, be honest, I don't typically do it. I just don't pack that string and just don't take the time to carry that thing around. But that is something that a lot of people does and works very well. I have even seen some people make up a little device that shoots a laser, laser pointer out there and uh, use it to get everything lined up and that works well too. So I'm gonna get the camera here and I'll show you how I like to have mine lined up. Okay, here's my view of my wind flags and how I like to get them set up. As I'm sitting here, you can see the tuner on my gun as I'm looking down through there. I've got all four flags just stacked one right on top of the other. From this camera view, it doesn't quite look like there. It's more, a little more accurate there. As you can see, they're all one right on top of the other with the farthest one being the highest. If you can do that, then you can look down through the scope and watch your flags. It makes it a lot easier and a lot faster. So try to get them set up like that. It takes a little extra time, but it sure pays off. All right, thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you at the range real soon. If you got any questions, just send them to us at host at straightshootingwithdanandjoseph.com.